Attention all passengers, we are making our final approach. Japan is a fascinating country when you know how to get around. The public transport system in each city can be so vastly different, it's impossible to travel from one city to the next without watching a few guides on YouTube like how to take a... Oh wait, is that why you are here? Well, you've come to the right place. Hmm? I hate doing research while traveling and know exactly how you feel. So I'm excited to share what I've learned from my own experiences to make your journey all the more enjoyable. Execute Order 66. A lot of you have asked about Osaka, so today I'll show you how public transport works in Osaka. I will explain the differences for each system, provide step-by-step -step instructions, and share my top recommendations for travel passes that offer both value and convenience. To make sure that you are fully confident when you finish, I recommend watching in order. But I've also added timestamps so you'll have an easy time navigating this tutorial just like how you would navigate Osaka after watching it. Let's get started. Osaka's public transport system is straightforward, primarily consisting of subways, buses, and trains. The extensive subway network operated by Osaka Metro provides excellent coverage and stands out as the fastest and most convenient mode of transport within the city. My past visits to Osaka relied almost entirely on subways, and you'll likely find yourself doing the same. Buses in Osaka are also operated by Osaka Metro. Dare I say that Osaka has the best buses in the entire Kansai region? We dare. This is all thanks to the fact that all of them are run by a single operator and every single route is flat fare, meaning regardless of how many stops you travel, the fare will stay 210 yen. However, due to the efficiency of the subway system, I've never had to use buses during my time in the city, but your mileage may vary. There are many train operators in the city. There is JR, which I believe needs no introduction and several privately owned companies or private railways like Hankyu and Nankai. But none of them has any significance when traveling within Osaka. The only exception to this is the JR Osaka Loop Line, which connects several key destinations around the center of the city, and you are probably going to take it more than once. The train looks like a subway, runs underground like subways do, and rides like a subway too. But since this is not a philosophy channel, it's indeed a JR train and not part of the Osaka metro system. Understanding the operator or system is crucial, especially when it comes to using travel passes. Many travelers often ask questions like, can I use a JR pass for the subway? Passes issued by one system typically cannot be used for another. Because the JR pass is from JR but the subway is run by Osaka metro, the answer is no. Don't worry too much about it though. In my travel pass recommendations, I'll provide clear explanations of what each pass can and cannot be used for. You won't have to play the guessing game. I'm to do not possible. Now I have talked about all the transport options in the city. Before I go on and walk you through how to actually use them, we must address the single most crucial item when traveling in Japan, <gasps> your IC card. These prepaid rechargeable cards give you access to most public transport systems without the hassle of buying tickets or using cash every time you travel, much like the Omnicard in New York or the Oyster Card if England is your city. In the Kansai region, including Osaka, the IC card issued is called Ikoka, featuring Iko the platypus as its mascot. However, IC cards from other regions, such as Pasmo or Suica, can be used interchangeably with a coca. If you already have an IC card from another region, you won't need another one. A common question among new travelers to Japan is whether they still need an IC card if they already have, for instance, the JR Pass. The short answer is yes, every pass comes with its limitations, and having an IC card provides flexibility for instances when a pass doesn't cover your travel needs. In essence, the IC card is a must-have, and obtaining one should be your top priority upon arrival. 
You can get yours from ticket machines and counters at Kansai International Airport, as well as most train and subway stations. Ticket machines labeled IC card, or simply card, will sell Ikoka cards, no matter the model or design. Avoid the green JR ticket machines though, they never sell IC cards. At the ticket machine, press the language button to switch to your preferred language, then select Buy Ikoka. You'll need to make a cash payment of 2,000 yen for each card you purchase. Of this, 1,500 yen becomes available balance, while the remaining 500 yen is a refundable deposit. So technically, the Ikoka card is free. One important thing to know is that Ikoka cards cannot be shared, so ensure each person you're traveling with gets their own card, alright? You can top up your card at ticket machines as well. This time, look for labels of IC charge, card charge, or simply charge. Choose the recharge amount, insert cash, and the full amount will be added to your card's balance. Pro tip, before exiting a ticket gate at a train or subway station, keep an eye out for a fare adjustment machine. While these are primarily for passengers who bought the wrong ticket, they often allow you to recharge your IC card as well. So if you find yourself low on balance and unable to exit the gate, look for a fare adjustment machine nearby. Now that you understand what IC cards are and how to use them, let's look at how to actually take each type of public transport. To ride a subway or a train, simply pass through the ticket gates by touching your IC card on the card reader. Alternatively, if you have a travel pass, insert it into the card slot and retrieve it on the other side. A subway or train station usually have two platforms, each bound for a different direction. Google Maps can guide you to the correct platform as well as the exit closest to your destination after you arrive. Follow the signage to the corresponding ticket gate and use your IC card or travel pass again on your way out. The fare will be calculated and deducted from your balance. To take a bus, simply board from the back and find a seat. There's no need to swipe the IC card or to take a numbered ticket, all thanks to the buses being flat fare. As your stop approaches, press the stop button located nearby to alert the driver. Upon reaching your destination, pay the flat fare at the front door. To pay the fare you can use either an IC card or cash. With an IC card, tap it on the card reader and wait for a beep. If paying with cash, insert exactly 210 yen into the coin slot on the top right. Should you lack change, you can insert a 1000 yen bill into the change machine to receive coins. Travel pass holders must show their passes to the driver or insert them into the magnetic card slot, depending on the pass type. Now that we've explored the various transportation options, let's try to do that on the cheap. Bruh. I've mentioned travel passes quite a bit and I have two recommendations that can help you save money while getting around the city. The first travel pass I highly recommend is the Osaka One Day Pass, also known as the Enjoy Eco Card in Japanese. Priced at 820 yen on weekdays and 620 yen on weekends and holidays, this pass offers exceptional value for money. With it, you'll enjoy unlimited rides on all subway lines and buses within the city for the entire day. Considering the full price is equivalent to about four bus or subway rides, it's nearly impossible not to get your money's worth during a day's visit. Pass holders also benefit from admission discounts at various popular tourist attractions such as Osaka Castle and the Wumida Sky Building Observation Deck. While these discounts could be rather small, like a 10% off, they add significant value to a pass priced at just 820 yen. And here's an extra perk. Although not explicitly mentioned, some attractions offer pass holders a fast lane when available. During my visits to Osaka Castle, for instance, we were brought directly to a priority ticket counter, bypassing a 15-minute queue entirely. While I can't guarantee this perk applies to all the places on the list, it's a fantastic bonus to have. The pass is very easy to buy and use. You can purchase one at almost any subway station either from ticket machines or ticket counters. However, if you buy it at the counter, you should ask for the Enjoy Eco Card. This is the official Japanese name for the pass, and some staff may be unfamiliar with the term Osaka One Day Pass. To use the card, simply insert it into the ticket gates at subway stations, or show it to the bus driver when disembarking. It's incredibly convenient. This is the type of travel pass I love best. You can just go anywhere at any time. You are in full control. Now, 
Let's talk about a recommendation for those who prefer a more structured itinerary, the Osaka Amazing Pass. Among the various travel passes in Kansai, this one is probably the most well known, and rightfully so. It should have been me! For an additional 2,000 yen, the Osaka Amazing Pass offers an enhanced experience compared to the Osaka One Day Pass. You'll still enjoy unlimited rides on subways and buses, but now, you also have access to some private railway trains at no extra cost. However, the real appeal of this pass is, instead of getting minor discounts, you now get free access to some of Osaka's top attractions and activities. Osaka Castle, free. Hep 5 Ferris Wheel, free. Shinkansen Ride to Tokyo? Okay, that one would still cost you a fortune and has nothing to do with the pass, but you get the idea. To truly maximize the value of the Osaka Amazing Pass, you'll want huh? to visit at least three different attractions in a day, ensuring you make the most of the extra 2,000 yen you've paid. This does require a bit more planning, but if done right, the saving potential of the Osaka Amazing Pass is indeed very amazing. Who are you? Who are so wise in the ways of science? To obtain the Osaka Amazing Pass, you can order online in advance and exchange it for the physical pass upon arrival at Kansai Airport, train stations, or any of these locations. Once you have the pass, simply use it as you would the Osaka One Day Pass. Insert it into subway ticket gates or show it to the bus driver. For more information, you can check out this video here. Alright, that should set you up nicely for your upcoming trip to Osaka. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more travel tips. And if there's anything I haven't covered that you're curious about, let me know in the comments below. I'll see you guys in the next video, and as always, have a fantastic trip. Thank you.